So the next question is from Jacqueline, and it's a question that is often ignored by most conventional docs. In fact, they think it's nonsense. Now, I've been doing this for over 20 years, but the question of yeast overgrowth and imbalances in your gut flora is really at the core of what we do. And I can't tell you how many patients I've helped by deal, helping them deal with imbalances in their gut flora, including yeast overgrowth. So the question is from Jacqueline. Let's listen to what she has to say. All right, so why does yeast overgrowth occur? How do we not get it? How do we deal with it? What do we do to resolve it? So when, when I look at a person, I look at them holistically. I look at all their body systems. And one of the key systems is the gut. We now know the gut is linked to weight gain, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, autism, dementia, autoimmune disease, allergies, eczema. I mean, you name it, the gut flora pretty much drives a lot of those processes. And one of the things that happens in our society is we do a lot of things to cause imbalances, including sugar and our 152 pounds of sugar and our 146 pounds of flour and starch, that actually fuels the growth of yeast. Also antibiotics do as well. When you take antibiotics once or 10 times or more, it all drives the imbalances and leads to yeast overgrowth. That's why women get yeast infections when they take an antibiotic. The pill also does that. Female hormone contraceptive will actually cause yeast overgrowth. And so will other drugs like steroids or even acid blockers. It changes the pH uh, of your gut, just like we just talked about. So there's many drugs that are problems that mess up your gut. And then you get this overgrowth of yeast uh, and if stress will also trigger it. So what I do is I look at the whole story, you know, have they had a lot of antibiotics? Have they eaten a diet high in sugar and flour? Have they taken acid blocking medications or hormones or, or taken um, steroids? And then, then what we do is we unwind that and we say, okay, what are the symptoms? Are they having vaginal yeast infections? Do they have rashes? Do they have eczema? I mean, there are a lot of reasons that, that um, yeast causes problems that can cause it across a number of different areas of your body. So I really look at the whole picture and then decide what to do. And we get sometimes tests, we can do stool cultures, we can do urinary tests, we can do um, you know, just a physical exam, often we'll pick it up. And, and then, we, then we treat it. And we often will use diet, cutting out the sugar and flour, getting rid of processed food, getting more um, probiotics in, which help fight with the yeast and kills it hopefully. <laughs> So we can do stool tests, we can do urine tests, uh, we can do physical exam and see if there's rashes or areas like eczema, dandruff, um, fungal growth under your toenails. All these things are clues that you can have yeast issues. And then I you know, I recommend a treatment program, which is essentially diet and, and certain supplements like probiotics that help fight with the, with the uh, yeast. Or also we give them herbs, if things like oregano or or a berberine or other herbs, lorisidin, which is actually a, um, from coconut oil, which actually fixes these problems. And then sometimes I'll use medication, whether it's nystatin, diflucan, spornox. These are medications that sometimes need to be used in severe cases, but it's really about balancing the overall gut flora. And if you want to read more about it, you can check out my blog, Is Hidden Fungus Making You Ill? Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you like this video, be sure to share it with your friends and family on Facebook and Twitter. And if you have any questions, you can tweet them to me or send your video submissions to drhyman.com and maybe next week I'll make a house call to you. Thanks for watching.